Hi there, my name's Emmy Speens, and today I'm talking to you about the Reddit blackout that occurred on Monday, June 12th, 2023. Earlier this year, Reddit announced that it would begin charging exorbitant fees for access to its API, directly impacting third-party app developers, as well as indirectly impacting everyone else, especially not safe for work content creators like myself. Also, I said indirectly, but pretty much directly. Like everyone's catching strays from this move by Reddit. So why are they doing this? What does this mean? And what is an API? An API is an application programming interface. APIs are essentially a means of giving developers, usually like third party developers, access to a site or application's data stored on that site or application. I'm gonna try to explain it succinctly. And if I'm wrong, don't correct me in the comments below. Like I, here's a challenge for you, like try to restrain yourself, okay? Um, I dare you, I dare you to restrain yourself. You like that, you little dirty d For example, a popular third-party application named Apollo makes Reddit like actually usable on a mobile device. That's not me like over-dramatizing either. Like you can't even open links in certain contexts if you're using the official Reddit app. The Reddit app also shoves subreddits that you're not subbed to in your feed, like incessantly, what is that? And it's also just like ugly, like it's uggo on top of all of that. And they don't feel the need to change it or beautify it up because third party developers have it covered, right? You know, sites like Reddit and formerly Twitter give third party developers access to their API for free or very low fees so that these developers can create programs and applications to enhance the end user experience. Usually these are quality of life things, but a lot of times they're actually like vital accessibility fixes that the main application or website just didn't think to implement or wasn't able to implement on their own. In some cases, like sites like these, specifically Reddit, would be totally inaccessible to people with disabilities. For example, blind people. Third party developers stepped up to create modifications for end users so that they would be able to use these apps just like everyone else. And usually they're doing this for very little profit, if any at all. In some cases, sites like these would be otherwise inaccessible for disabled people. Without the third party developers stepping up to create these modifications so that all users can access the application fairly. But at the end of the day, right, you can get kind of the logical reasoning behind why a website or an application would allow third party developers access to its API, right, right. It increases engagement and usability just by existing. Like if you create a better end user experience, of course more users are going to use your app or your website or whatever, like that's just how it works. Here's how the Apollo developer described the relationship between API, third-party developers, and the website, it's much more accurate. I would, I would, I would trust his interpretation. But I think that was pretty spot on. Like, I don't think it was that far off, right? I don't know. <laughs> Reddit came out to clarify that apps that stay under the usage limit without monetizing would still be able to access Reddit's API for free. So free applications, as well as mod tools and bots that stay under Reddit's API like data usage limit, won't be charged the new fee for using the API. Commenters have noted that this aggressive move to raise prices on Reddit's part is probably related to their rumored IPO offering later this year. In protest of the planned restructuring, more than 7,000 subreddits shut down on Monday, June 12th, 2023. An incredible number of users and developers have come out to say that these planned changes would force most applications to shut down. For example, for example, Apollo's developer Christian Selig, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, said Reddit would charge him 20 million a year to operate his application. Twitter ended free API access earlier this year at Elon Musk's unhinged directive. They were reamed for the exorbitant price structure, but Reddit's pricing is almost as obscene as pointed out by Apollo's developer. For 50 million API calls, Apollo's developer says that Twitter's initial pricing structure would have charge more than $50,000 for it to operate per year. Reddit's new structure would charge him $12,000 for those same 50 million API calls, which 
I know seems like a drastic reduction. For reference, a site like Imgur, a site quite similar in the size of its user base and its purpose to Reddit, would charge only $166 for those same 50 million API calls. That's more than a 70% increase compared to its competition. That's wild. <laughs> like, yeah. 50,000 versus 12,000. Again, seems pretty like a reasonable decrease, right? But 12,000 versus $166 is that that's more unhinged. Honestly, Reddit should be thanking their lucky stars that Elon Musk took the helm at Twitter, I feel like, especially earlier this year with all that uh, their API stuff. Like what a relief that must have been for Reddit. <laughs> So how does Reddit justify this change? Well, they don't, but they sure do try. Reddit CEO Steve Huffman maintained that Reddit is not currently profitable, but has been in fact subsidizing a number of third-party apps, according to him, which do manage to make a profit. And he points to Apollo as one such example. Um, so basically he's salty that other businesses managed to do what he couldn't and like, be a good business. That is such a pet peeve of mine when like businesses that have been around for years and years and years are like, oh, we're not making a profit. Well, why do you deserve to stick around? Okay, anyway. His primary and really only compelling argument is the fact that AI generative tools scrape Reddit so that they can like fill the coffers of like AI chatbots like ChatGPT, which I think is a fair argument, but that's like a very specific thing. Online advertising nosedived in 2022, and it shows no sign of stemming the bleed in 2023. In the same vein as a number of other tech companies like Twitter, Meta, and Google, Reddit's business model up until this point has relied heavily on advertising. In light of this rumored IPO later this year, it makes sense that Reddit would want to put on the most profitable face, right? But in the Ask Me Anything session conducted with Reddit CEO Steve Huffman, Redditors asked why Reddit couldn't emulate other profit models like that of Epic Games. Epic Games uses a profit sharing model that passes along 40% of the net revenue from their real money purchases to creators to offset the hit that they're taking by giving creators more of a cut. They're implementing cool, new, fancy, shiny tools for creators to play with to create new content for their games. This strategy is a great idea because it incentivizes creators and it incentivizes players not only to come back to the game if they've left, but to stay on longer for new challenges. They're basically creating content for a game at no extra cost to Epic in the long term. Reddit CEO's response to this great example was that profit sharing was complex, but potentially interesting. Maybe someday. If you're reading between the lines, they just don't care. <laughs> like if there is any thought behind why they didn't go for a profit sharing model beyond greed, he doesn't feel like he owes anyone an explanation for it, which I think is also like, for a company that is like rumored to go into an IPO, isn't it so funny that like when companies start to enter that phase where they're prepping for an IPO, they actually get more like antagonistic with their end user. It just boggles my mind. Anyway. Do this. Oh, I'm coming at you like a dark horse. Are you ready for liberty dawn? I hope you can't see how sweaty I am later. So I mentioned earlier that third-party apps have been a game changer for blind and visibly impaired users. And these two are unfortunately at risk for dissolution upon implementation of these new API fee structures. Reddit claims that they expect to allow free apps that provide accessibility fixes for users to continue accessing the API for free. Well, number one, do you expect those free apps to just function as a charity? Like how are these accessibility apps supposed to function? You're not meeting those needs, but you're not willing to shell out, but somebody else has to be. What? They also don't go into detail about how you make the cut as an accessibility app. How do you qualify for this exemption if you meet the accessibility needs of users? Remember, these are beyond aesthetic fixes and a dark mode. These third-party apps are sometimes the only way entire segments 
segments of our communities can participate in what Reddit wants us to believe is the front page of the internet. Why do only some of us get to access that? Well, if that's true, I don't know. Reddit just doesn't give a shit about disabled people participating, right? They didn't extrapolate on what apps could do to meet those exemptions so they wouldn't have to pay out of pocket to help disabled people read your fucking web. Like, how you're making it harder to get profit for yourself in the long term if you cut off the ability of an entire population to access your website. Beyond stripping users of quality of life improvements and accessibility fixes, there's also the issue of modding tools that access the API that are user interfaces for moderators that make it possible to like moderate the website. Not safe for work content makes up a huge portion of like Reddit, but it won't be accessible via the API any longer under this new policy. A group of moderators of several major subreddits wrote in an open letter to the company that this change would result in a flood of spam inundating the site, since popular modding tools would no longer be able to help stem the tide of not safe for work content through the use of the API. Karma farming, link dumping, double posting, all of this awaits us perverts and purveyors of porn trying to get our rock. Off. Imagine trying to rub one out and all of the scrolling you already do now, triple that because it's just going to be cover, it's going to be wall to wall spam of titties. Wait, no, but bad, bad titties, bad titties everywhere. And as a sex worker, like that's going to make mm, the jobs of my, I don't advert, like I don't use Reddit for that. I use it to get off personally. My colleagues, my colleagues, my colleagues in sex work, they're going to be greatly affected by this because now they're gonna be lumped in with scammers and spammers. And, and moderators on these NSFW uh, subreddits are already overwhelmed by spam. Like, have you seen one? They're not like running at the top of their game. Like, it's, but it's because of, you know, they're human moderators working in conjunction with automated tools. Now, if you take away those automated tools, the human moderators are gonna be overwhelmed and probably just like bow out entirely. Remember, moderators on Reddit, that's a free fucking gig. These people love that site so much in the communities that it enables that they put hard work into it for free. And Reddit is deciding to make their job harder. And in the long term, I, I, I just don't get how they don't see how this is gonna be punishing their own website. But Reddit's a company. Right? If they're planning an IPO, they're not thinking long term. Everybody at the top is thinking about how they can cash out as quick as possible. The problem with this is like, this is a strategy I feel like that could have worked really well before social media, before sites like Reddit, because people would kind of be more in the dark about it. But investors can see that the user base is agitated, like that they're gaining traction, that they're getting news coverage. It's actually working it. like it's not working out in the favor of reddit as a company it's working in favor of the users i don't know if it's actually going to change anything about the way reddit conducts these api changes but reddit like many other companies is laying workers off left and right while also enforcing hiring freezes that coupled with the increased antagonism between reddit's management and its user base is actually starting to concern Wall Street. And what could be a troubling development for its rumored IPO later this year? Fidelity, an investing company, you know, big on Wall Street, uh, evaluated Reddit and actually slashed its valuation of Reddit by 41%. What is the point of implementing all these changes if you're not gonna be able to reach your goal with the IPO anyway? Why can't you be happy making one of the best sites on the internet better? instead of worse, because you have that power. I'm sure there's like money above him that's making like, you know, puppet strings. <laughs> and it's like, at the end of the day, like CEO Steve Huffman is just, he's just a dude, but he's also a dude with an immense amount of power. And right now he has a lot of eyes on him and he continues instead to entertain petty bullshit instead of like his user base's legitimate concerns. It's such an easy opportunity to be a hero. Like even just cynically, like you could just make your mark on history by doing what is pretty much the bare minimum. But this fixation that money means more than anything is, it tortures these tech guys. You know, like he's tortured every day. There's no way this guy is happy, right? Like if you scroll through that AMA and see a salty response, like 
Dang. Also, he's admitted this guy. I actually, okay, here's the thing about Steve Huffman. Like, as an actual person, ugh. but as like this idea of a character, he's kind of funny because he actually has been caught altering comments about himself on Reddit. When people were criticizing him in a thread, I think, about the subreddit The Donald, he changed allegedly, I, well, no, he came out and said he changed their comments. So it was about the Donald moderators rather than him and his like leadership as a whole. I think it's cool to come out and say it, not to do it, but if you're gonna do it, at least say it, right? And then it's kind of like, well, no, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little more information heavy, a little more numbers heavy, and I know I sound like a big old dumb when I try to like talk tech, but I just got these new pants from Fashion Brand Company. And I, I okay, look, the camera's pointing down, which is a bad angle, but for my butt. This video has gone off the rails. Like, comment, and subscribe if you can tolerate me. Also, I have spicy sites. You can find all the links in there. I have an Insta- Stop. Stop. I have spicy sites. You can find all the links below. Um, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You know. You're here, so you obviously found me through one of those things. Have a good rest of your day, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.